Well, we're about to step into winter 2022-2023. What may it bring? Well, I'm certainly working on the finer details. I hope to have the winter forecast released by about midnight tonight, hopefully. Um, it's been a bit of a battle, actually, over the last couple of days, trying to work out between night shift and trying to get everything done on in day-to-day -day stuff, as well as the written forecast, as well as doing these... Um, these videos as well so um i hope to try and get the forecast released on marfoganweather.com within the next day uh, you know few hours or so i'm driving between inverness and glasgow i have got my, my my job to do of course and in between that i hope to try and just put the finishing touches together but this of course is footage from the the the, the tonga hunga eruption underwater eruption that took place um back at the beginning of this year and it's interesting when you think back to that eruption the, the potential imp implications uh you know within the global atmosphere it is said that it released of course with it being a submarine volcano that it released you know of course a tremendous amount of water vapor into the atmosphere and there is confliction between whether it's you know it, it led to some cooling of the planet versus warming of the planet i personally believe that it's possible that it's warmed the northern hemisphere to an extent uh, but in turn there is solid evidence that, that shows that it's cooled the stratosphere within the southern hemisphere and you know it has been uh, pretty darn chilly uh, over the course of this year for places such as Australia, a good part of Africa, parts of uh, South America as well. And within the uh, both the mid-latitudes and the low-latitudes of the Southern Hemisphere, there has been a marked cooling within the stratosphere. And there is an article that goes on to say that it potentially could have the opposite effect uh, for the northern hemisphere stratosphere so is it possible that we get a stronger and colder than normal stratospheric polar vortex over over the pole over the south pole and in turn actually that leads to something weaker uh, within the northern hemisphere only time will tell that but certainly we have got potentially the deepest negative arctic oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation, by the way, this is off the GFS Ensemble, since 2010. We have not seen this taking place. This is the NAO and this is the AO. We have not seen this, folks, for the month of December in 12 years. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that 2010 is going to happen again. It would take an awful lot for 2010 to happen part of the reason why i'm i would struggle with that is because the oceans are much warmer than they were back in 2010 now going back a little bit further than that this is the sea surface temperatures uh, for 1999 came off a super el nino and we had a a, a relatively warm atlantic but look at the pacific very very cold PDO in place. We had a cold Indian Ocean as well, if you notice here. This is the current sea surface temperature profile. Now, there, I do show in my winter forecast similarities to this, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it's actually quite hard to find it because, of course, we do have um, a situation at the moment where the oceans are far, far warmer than they were back even in 2008, 2009. So we had the Super El Nino 97, 98, then the Pacific turned very cold. Then we kind of crept out of that in the early to mid 2000s. And really from about 2010 onwards, we've had fluctuation between a warm Gulf of Alaska uh, versus um, you know cold Central East Pacific with associated with the La Niña's. And we've had cooling within the, um, the North Atlantic here. But notice the cooling that we've seen. Now, this is, of course, like I say, as of the 29th of, of November. And notice the cooling uh, centred over the North in the North Atlantic. Is this a tripole 
of warm, cold, warm over the North Atlantic here. So I think that is quite a favourable look in terms of the sea surface temperature profile. We'll have a warm North Pacific. We've got cooling uh, up against Alaska and pretty much down the west coast of North America. We've still got the La Nina in place at the moment here. We've got strong warming over the western portion of the Pacific Ocean at the moment here. We're seeing upward motion over the West Pacific. We're seeing upward motion over the North Atlantic. And in turn, that is favouring the uh, situation that we've got as we cut, uh, go forward here. So this is, the, this is the CFSV2 for the month of December. And you couldn't really get more of a classic textbook strong negative north atlantic oscillation strong positive bang slap over greenland we've got the trough uh, to the south of the british isles here that certainly looks very favorable indeed looking at the two meter temperature anomalies here for the month of december and we have got a cold europe we've got a cold north america we've got a cold eastern portion of asia albeit it might not be as intense this is probably got the hallmarks of the coldest December since 2010. Uh, so uh, certainly very interesting. You know, it was the core of the cold over Europe. We've got some cold over the British Isles and Ireland. Even getting the CFSV2, folks, to show a cold in normal December for the UK is pretty tough to see. It's quite a rare thing to see in recent times. Um. So, yeah, it is going to be very interesting to see as we go forward again i'm not forecasting much in the way of snowfall at the moment here and we don't have a particularly cold europe so the beast from the east at the moment uh there's no point in you know kind of jumping down that road because uh you know let's get let's get one thing straight here you need to have all the ingredients coming together and it's tough to do that but look at this here as we play through the latest run of the gfs you can see here a nice big strong area of high pressure extend from Russia towards uh, Scandinavia. Now we're starting to see the force in the south of uh, disturbed weather here. We've got a lot of blocking now starting to build from, from Russia to Greenland. We're starting to, of course, see the, the upper air pattern flipping on its head. Instead of seeing a westerly, we're seeing an easterly. But we need to get colder underneath that high westwards and eventually it should reach the British Isles, but we will see what uh, happens as we go forward. But certainly that is is a very interesting look rather than saying anything else. Then, of course, as we start to see the focus of high pressure up towards Greenland, we start to see the airflow coming in from the north. There's the snow chances beginning to increase. So level-headed, showing you exactly what's taking place avoiding hype but certainly this is a very interesting pattern especially if you get colder in place areas of low pressure start to become embedded within that cold flow we could start to see the snow uh, start to kind of come and then start to expand once you start to get snow on the ground then you start to build the cold even further without snow on the ground the cold is very limited uh, indeed here looking at the 850 temperature evolution here as we go forward quick video today because i'm actually about to leave for work let's play it through the loop you can see what happens here watch uh, the air mass to the east there's us starting to uh, transport colder air in even by uh, this upcoming saturday by the way those 850 temperatures are starting to get pretty darn cold actually if you notice here then as we continue to play through the loop here all that mild air is getting forced south and keeping on that there as that area of high pressure to the, to, starts to focus more towards the west. In comes the very cold air indeed. We have got a cold December coming up here, folks. Look at that here at the very, very end of the loop. Look at how intensely cold that air mass is. Yeah, it's not a good, a, a good outlook, that's for sure, for certainly uh, people's finances. Um, so, yeah. I'm not going to exactly get overly excited based on the fact that, yeah, I want to see snow, I want to see cold, but I also don't want to see people dying, essentially, because they can't afford to heat their homes. So let's wait and see what happens anyway. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Please like, please share, and subscribe if you haven't already done so.
I'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.